Math 242, Quest to College, I'm Joe Vasta. We'll be covering section 7.1 and 7.2, and this is pre-calculus. So 7.1 is a very short section, and what they do is they introduce to you something called um, the sections of a cone, or sometimes called the double-napped cone, which is actually what we would think is a, a cone, two of them put together, you know, at that point. And so if you take a slice through that, this way, you end up, and it's parallel to that, you end up getting a parabola. If you cut the cone just like this, put a plane through the cone and it makes a cross section that is a circle, if you kind of slant that plane and cut it at an angle, you end up getting an ellipse, which is like a smushed circle. Now if you take the plane and cut it straight down, you get two shapes that, that look like parabolas, but they're not, and this, this thing here it has two parts to it. It's called a hyperbola. So those four sections Conic sections, that's what they're called, they will be covered in 7.2, 7.3, 7.4, and 7.5. 7.2 will be the circle, 7.3 will be the parabola, 7.4 will be the ellipse, and 7.5 will be the hyperbola. I know that the images here are kind of blurry, I just went and grabbed this from some website. Um, so hopefully the whole lecture will not be blurry, but that completes 7.1, just showing you what those are. There's really no homework in 7.1. The first homework is in 7.2. So let's do 7.2. So 7.2, I'm going to check to make sure it's clear enough. Perfect. Circles. Okay, let's C be a point, so C is going to be this point right here, and let R be a positive number, so there's R. A circle is the set of points satisfying the following. A point is on the circle if its distance to C is R. The point C is called the center and the number R is called the radius, so that's the way you define a circle. You have any point and any distance. And you can think of this as maybe if you had a string, um, putting, pinning the string there and then the other end you hook a pencil or something and you just kind of create your circle. So this is the definition of a circle. I mean, it's very familiar to us. We've seen circles before in math classes. But what we're going to do here is we're going to do a derivation. And this one's not going to be that bad. We want to derive the equation of this circle. So the circle happens to be all the points on this outside part. Now in kindergarten, I remember the teacher holding up a big cardboard piece, and it was a circle, and she pointed to that and said that was a circle. So when I was little, I used to think the whole thing was a circle. But in a math class, the only part that is the circle is this edge part right here. Okay, anything inside the circle is not the circle. Even the center is not the circle. The only part that's the circle are the points on the outside. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick any point on the outside. I could have picked this XY point as being over here or down there, but I picked it here. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a line from the center to the outside. This line represents the radius. Okay, so what am I going to do? I'm going to use, so this is a derivation. Some of you might want to fast forward to um, the formula that we get. The distance formula is what we're going to use for our derivation. And the distance formula gives us the distance between two points. I'm going to take the distance between 
this point and that point. Let's write up the distance formula first. The distance formula equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, so we're kind of going on to the graph there. So that's the distance formula. Well, the distance between these two points, we know what it is. It's r. Now, the two points we, we probably want to label. Let's call this one x2 and y2, and we'll call this one x1 and y1. So we just plug this into the formula and see what we end up getting. Now, do you have to do something this crazy in your homework? No, we'll get to those kinds of problems. So x2 is x, x1 is h, so minus h squared plus y2 is y, y1 is k squared, and so I have this right from the distance formula. What I'm going to do to both sides of this equation is I'm going to square both sides. I end up getting r squared equals, and then we have the square and the square root, they're going to go away. We have x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared. And we have just derived the equation for the circle. So let's go ahead and put that up here. It's kind of dumb, I wasted a whole piece of paper for this. Here it is. So you've got a circle, and that circle has center C, which is HK, has a radius R, and the equation looks like this. It's the one I derived. The R squared is on the right hand side. That's just a matter of style. Okay, so now the rest of what we do in 7.2, the rest of what we do happens to be problems that you will um, see in your homework, okay? Similar problems. So here is problem number one. And problem number one says, write the standard equation of the circle. Oh, by the way, this right here is the standard equation of a circle. Um, when not given, find the center and the radius. So on this one, we don't have to find the center and the radius because those are given. So I'll keep, uh, maybe I'll go like this. So I'm doing some paper folding here. So there's the equation of the circle. So that's what I'm going to do. Here's the center. The center happens to be h, k, and um, we're just going to plug it into this equation here. So I have x minus h squared, I'm just copying that down, plus y minus k which is 4 squared. And what does that equal? That equals r squared. So this is this is r right here. And so this is 5 squared. Let's go simplify our answer and you know that's that's what it is here. So this is going to be x plus 2 quantity squared plus y minus 4 quantity squared. This equals 25. There's the answer. We're done with this problem. Now there are some problems in your homework that they'll ask you to graph the circle. So I'll do that in a different color. We're done with what they asked us here. I'm going to go ahead and graph this. The graph we could have actually graphed this without having this equation here. I have the center of negative 2, 4. 
So negative 2, 4, there's the center right there. Um, this is probably easier to graph on grid paper. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, go from the center 5 in each direction. So I'm going to go 5 down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, put a point. So here's 4, here's negative 2. I'm going to go 5 up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now I'm at 9, this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis. Here's the point up there. It's not going to be perfect because, you know, my I'm not using grid paper. I'm going to go 5 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I'm going to go 5 to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Look at this. I mean, that scaling is not even good here. Oh, well. So this is negative 7. Used to work for the federal government. So, I mean, this is actually a good day here in terms of what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and graph the circle. These things are hard to draw. They're especially hard to draw if you're um, taking a video of yourself drawing a circle. There's the circle. So the circle has a radius 5 and it has the center of negative 2, 4. This part was not asked, but in your homework sometimes they'll ask you to graph the circle. The important part is, can we draw the equation or write out the equation? So that completes problem number 1. Let's go ahead and do problem number 2. Um, by the way, the instructions will stay the same. Write the standard equation of the circle. When not given, find the center and the radius. Here's the problem right here. The center is 3, 4, and the circle passes through the point 1, 2. So why don't you pause the video and see if you can do this one on your own. If you decide not to, then here's how we do this problem. There are a few ways of doing this problem. I'm going to try to do the simplest way here. We know that this 3 and this 4 we can label with letters H and K. We have our equation of the circle right there. You should try to memorize this because it's very useful. You'll see circles in future math classes. So I'm going to go ahead and plug those into the equation. It is, it's true that I do not have the r, so I'm going to go ahead and go x minus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared. This equals r squared. Okay, so there's actually a few ways of doing the problem. I will show you the other way after we get the answer here. So the way that I like to do is this circle passes through infinitely many points, and those points are x, y. Well, this just happens to be one x and y ordered pair that is on the circle. So I'm going to plug that into the circle for x and y and find out what r and r squared is. So let's go ahead and do that. We have... 1 minus 3 squared plus 2 minus 4 squared equals r squared. So this is 1 minus 3 is negative 2. This is 2 minus 4, which is um, negative 2 as well. So this gives me 4 plus 4. Intense calculations here. Haven't had to use my calculator yet. So this is 8. 8 equals r squared. So at this moment, we could actually write out the circle because the circle has an r squared. And um, I don't actually have to um, take the square root on both sides to write out the equation here. The equation then is x minus 3 
squared plus y minus 4 squared equals r squared, which is 8. And so that gets me the circle. Now, on the problems, they also said when they're not given, find the center. That was given. And find the radius. The radius is gotten by taking the square root on both sides. It will give you plus or minus root 8. You're not going to take the minus because the radius is a positive number. So that's what some people would write for the radius. We have no units on here, so that would be an acceptable, well, almost an acceptable answer. We need to simplify that square root. So the radius happens to be um, 2 root 2, because 8 is 4 times 2, and you take the square root of 4, it comes out. And so there it is. That completes the problem. But I did show you, I mean, I did say I would show you another way of doing this problem, so we're done. This is just extra, meaning you don't have to write this down. This is just another way. Now, some of you would have um, chosen this way right away. You would have said, ah, it has a center and it has a point on the circle. Um, maybe you would have even drawn it. Now, I'm not saying we have to draw it, but if you had drawn it, you would have gone one, two, three, one, two, three, four. There's the center, and a point that is on the circle is one, two. So to find the distance between those two points would be to find the radius. So some people would do it that way. They would say, find the distance between um, 1, 2 and 3, 4. And to do that, we would write out the distance formula. x2 minus x1. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say, if you didn't want to see another way of doing the problem, feel free to take the little scroll at the bottom of the YouTube video and just go until you see problem number three. Plus y2 minus y1 squared. So this is x1, y1, x2, y2. So this gives me x2. I'll kind of skip some steps here. Minus x1, which is 2 squared and y2 minus y1 is 2 squared, which gives me square root of 2 plus 2. No, square root of 4 plus 4 is the square root of 8, which is 2 root 2. Now that's exactly what we got. I know we have a d there, but that d is the radius. And then with the radius, you would then be able to put it into this equation. And when you square that, you end up getting 8. So we'll move on to the next problem, problem number 3. So here goes problem number 3. What we're trying to do in these problems is write the standard equation of the circle and when not given, find the center and the radius. Um, we don't have the center, we don't have the radius. So what should we do? Just like the other problem, there are a few ways of doing this problem. Um, you can do a distance formula and find out what the diameter is. Or there's another formula that we've had in chapter one with two points. You can actually find the midpoint of those two points. The midpoint of two points that are on a diameter of a circle will give you the center of the circle. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find the midpoint. Now there is a midpoint formula and I believe it goes x1 plus x2 divided by 2. That's the first coordinate. And then y1 
plus y2 divided by 2, that is the second coordinate. So we'll go ahead and label this one x1, y1, x2, y2, and we'll plug it into the formula here. So x1, negative 5, plus x2, plus a negative 1, this is all over 2, y1, which is negative 6, plus y2, which is 1, this is all over 2. I'll just move it this way so I have room to do the rest of the problem. This is going to give me negative 6 over 2. And the other one is going to be negative 5 over 2. So look what I have here. I have negative 3 and negative 5 halves. This happens to be the midpoint of these two points on a diameter of a circle, but it also happens to be the center. And so now we have just found our H and our K. We still don't know what the radius is. Some teachers would say then take one of the points on the circle and take the center and do the distance formula, but that's a little too intense for me. I'm going to go ahead and write out um, using that right there. I'm going to write out what we have. We know what h is and k is, so I'm going to write out the circle here. x minus h, so it's really going to be x plus 3 squared. Then we have plus, here's the other one, y minus k, so y plus 5 halves squared. This equals r squared. Okay, so we can get rid of this again. And we can say, well, we could just plug in one of these points on the circle. Doesn't matter which point we plug in. Well, we don't want to plug in the center because the center is not on the circle. But it doesn't matter. I'm going to plug in negative 1, 1. Now, you might want to pause the video and plug in negative 5, negative 6. Doesn't matter which point you plug in, you'll still get the same radius. Okay, so here it goes. This is going to be the x value is negative 1. So I have negative 1 plus 3 squared plus 1 plus 5 halves squared equals r squared. So this is 2 squared. Don't need those parentheses there, but 2 was feeling a little insecure, so I figured uh, put some parentheses around there. This is 5 halves plus 1. 5 halves plus 2 halves is 7 halves squared. This equals r squared. So this is 4 plus, square that, 7 times 7, that is 49, and then this is 4. Okay, I'm going to get a common denominator. Of course, this equals r squared. My common denominator is 4. So it looks like, we'll bring this over here, and I'll write the r squared on the left-hand side. I've got 16 plus 49 over 4. So r squared equals, um, this is going to give me 65 over 4. So at this point, I know what r squared is. I almost have the answer right here. I'm going to go ahead and plug the 65 over 4 in for r squared. So my final answer, x plus 3 quantity squared plus y plus 5 halves quantity squared equals 65 over 4.
Once again, there's other ways of doing this problem, and one of the other ways would have been using the distance formula to find the distance between the center and one of those points. That would have been a little more painful. Um, I didn't do everything they asked. They wanted, when it wasn't given, to find the center. I kind of already have that written down. It is negative 3 negative 5 halves and the other thing they wanted me to find was the radius so on this I can do the square root property I'm not going to put the plus or minus because the radius is has to be positive this is going to be root 65 over root 4 root 65 you can investigate that and see that you don't have any perfect squares in there and 4 happens to be square root of 4 is 2. I think 65 is um, 5 times 13, so there's no, you don't have any pairs in your hand then. So our radius is root 65 over 2. It's the square root of that right there, and there's our answer. Okay, let's go to the next problem. The instructions happen to be the following. Write the standard equation of the circle and find the radius and the center. So this looks new. Um, this looks different. This does not look like that right there. So this is the standard equation of the circle. And with the standard equation, you can see the center and the radius. Here, you cannot see the center and the radius. Okay. So what are we going to do with this? When you get a problem like this in your homework, you want to make sure there's coefficients of 1 in front of the x squared and the y squared. And there's coefficients of 2 there. So what I'm going to do to everything in the equation is divide by 2. So when that happens, I have x squared plus y squared minus 4x minus 10y plus 26. This equals 0. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do something called completing the square. Now when we did parabolas, we could have done completing the square, but we found a fancy formula to find the vertex. So we never had to cover this until this section. How do I complete the square? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put all my x's together. So I have an x squared and that negative 4x is going to go right next to it. I'm going to leave a space and then I'm going to put my y's. y squared minus 10y. I'm going to leave another space. Now here's the deal. I'm going to put the 26, the number, goes to the other side of the equation. So this equals 26. Now how do I complete the square? What I do is I take this coefficient in front of the x. So what I want to do is add a number here so these three terms will be a perfect square trinomial. And so I'm going to take this number here, negative 4, and I have to remember to do these two things. It's kind of like a recipe. We chop it in half and we square it. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, and then we square it. So we have 4. So we're going to refer to 4 as the magic number. I'm going to add the 4 there, and because this is an equation and it has to stay balanced, I have to add the 4 there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and complete the square in the y terms. I'm going to take the negative 10, I'll do it over here. 
and this recipe that always works. Chop it in half and square it. Um, let's put let's put the results underneath. So negative 10 over 2 is negative 5. We square that. It's 25. So the magic number is 25 will always be a positive number because you're squaring. So I'm going to add 25 to the left hand side of the equation and add 25 to the right hand side of the equation. So this does seem a little complicated. But we'll get through this. That right there is going to become a perfect squared trinomial, which means if you factor it, you can factor it into x minus 2 times x minus 2, x minus 2 squared. So that's what that one becomes right there. Now, let's take out the green here. This right here can factor into a perfect square as well. And so you'll have, if you look at that and try to factor it, you'll end up getting y minus 5 quantity squared. And so that gives you that one there. Now here's a little trick. If you've completed the square, the number that goes like right here, which was a negative 2, is always going to be the number you see in there. Same with this. There was a negative 5. That was right there before you squared it. And so that is completing the square. On this side, I'm going to end up getting um, 51, 52, 53, 54. 55 and so I believe that's what I'm going to get. Okay, I don't know why I'm hesitating here. I know why I'm hesitating. Because I totally messed this up just a little it's a good thing um, I've got this white out here and I know what you're thinking you're thinking Joe you, you will get 55 no I won't because I did something bad and maybe this was killing some of you and you've already sent me some emails like why are you even teaching math when I brought the 26 to the other side, I should be doing that by subtracting 26 on both sides. So when I subtract 26 on both sides, that should be a negative 26. So the question is, Joe, why don't you just redo the video? No, I don't want to do that. Because if I had to be a perfectionist on these videos, I'd be back still working on the video for 6.1 and we just don't want to do that so what do I really end up getting now um, now what I have okay so that gives me a negative 1 plus 4 is a positive 3 okay, so I apologize about the mistake and maybe I just did that to show you I was human I mean I don't want to be perfect on these Whew. so there's the answer um, what do they ask us to do? They ask us to write the standard equation of the circle. There's the standard equation of the circle. They also just said to identify the center. So the center is gotten by, you know, this is x minus h, so this is 2. It's kind of like the opposite number you see in there, and then this one's going to be 5. And then the radius, lots of times people like to go, oh, the radius is 3. But remember, here is the equation here. That's r squared. So the radius is going to be root 3. And so that gives us the answer. Now, for some of you, you might want to skip ahead to problem number 5. For other people, I want to show you something here. When you have a perfect square trinomial. Let's go 
a minus b quantity squared. If you multiply that out, that would give you a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, so what we did, okay, so we're kind of done with the problem. We're just having a math nerd moment. <laughs> okay, so um, what, what we are going to do is show you why this recipe works. Uh, it's because I took the coefficient that was in front of the a. Okay, I'll stop that. I don't know if I can continue doing that. And some of you are like, you always sound like that. So, ow, that, that hurts. But So, like, acting as the a is sort of the x. And the coefficient that we see on that a happens to be negative 2b. So if I took negative 2b, so suppose I didn't know what that was. Let's go ahead and use the whiteout. Oh, look at that. Suppose I didn't know that. Okay, And that's kind of what we had here. We didn't know what that 4 was. I take the negative 2b, if I end up jumping it in half and squaring it, so that was the little ritual that I said we had to do, we ended up getting inside the parentheses negative b, which is precisely what you see in there, and that will always happen. It could be, you know, if this was a plus, it would be a plus b. And then when you square it, you end up getting b squared, which we were calling the magic number, and that's actually what's right there. And so that's kind of a justification. I mean, not, not complete proof of this, but of why chopping it in half and squaring it for this number right here works. Okay, let's go ahead and do problem number five. Let's see where we are and see if things look blurry. Looks pretty good. I'm in 37 minutes. So let's go ahead and um, write the standard equation of the circle and then we'll find its center and radius. So the first thing we want to do is divide everything in this equation by 4. And here's the other thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to take this negative 35 over 4 and put it on the other side and this time I'll remember to add it to both sides. So I have x squared, oh, I should have done something else, plus y squared minus x plus 6y. So, you know what, I'll just write this over here. Minus 35 over 4 equals 0. Okay, I'm going to group my x's together, leave a space group my y's together, leave a space, and add 35 over 4 to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to go ahead and take out maybe the red pin and say what's the coefficient in front of the x term? It is a negative 1. I'm going to chop it in half and square it. Now, there's nothing I can do inside the parentheses. That's, it is what it is, negative one half. And so I'm going to square that. It's going to become one fourth. So I'm going to add one fourth to both sides of this equation. I'm going to do the same thing over here with the six. Okay, this I did it with the negative one. So I'm going to take six chop it in half and square it. There's an old drinking song where it describes it. It's something about chopping it in half and squaring it. So, oh well, get back to this. 6 over 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to add 9 there and add 9 on that side. 
Okay, this guy right here is going to become a, well it is a perfect square trinomial and it will factor into a perfect square. Now you can try factoring it or you can do what I said, you can come over here and, and look at the number before it gets squared and that's what's going to go here. And if you don't trust this, you can always go x minus one half times x minus one half, do a FOIL and you will get that. Now over here I had forgotten to put, I know this looks weird, I didn't put a plus here. Okay, So now I'm going to do the same thing. So the orange gave me this. I'm going to do the same thing with the y's. So this is going to give me y and then factor that into a perfect square. You can either really do the factoring and go, oh, let's see, I think it's 3. Or you can look and see there's a 3 there squared. And so this green thing became that right there. Now on the right hand side we have 35 over 4 plus 1 over 4 is 36 over 4 plus 9. 36 over 4 is 9. This guy right here is 9. So you have 9 plus 9. Let's write out our final answer. So this gives me 18. There's the standard equation of the circle and why we like the standard equation of the circle is we can read off the center which happens to be you take the opposite of what you see there so one half and the opposite of what you see there negative three there's the center and the radius well the radius happens to be not 18 but the square root of 18 so the square root of 18, 18 is really 9 times 2. And so you can put a 3 out on the table. You're still holding a 2 in your hands. And so the radius is 3 root 2. So that completes problem number 5 in 7.2. We're going to go ahead and do one more problem. And this will be problem six. And it's another problem where you're completing the square. And maybe this is the toughest skill in 7.2 where you are completing the square. I don't know. Just do your homework. The closer you do your homework to the time you saw the videos, the faster you'll do on your homework. If you wait two weeks, you'll have to figure a lot of things out again. Okay, so look what I have here. There's ones in front of the x squared and one in front of the y squared, so you don't have to divide at the beginning. The thing is, this equation seems to be missing a just a, a y term. So let's go ahead, group our x's together, and leave the space. And we'll put the y squared there. See, there's not another like 3y or anything like that, and then I'll put the equals. This is going to be negative 16. So it looks like I'm only completing the square on a problem like this. I'm going to take the 8. That's the coefficient. Chop it in half and square it. Yes, I have issues. My 8 over 2 is not even inside the parentheses. How embarrassing is that? It's like I'm wearing pants that are too short. Wait, I always do that. So this is... 4 squared, which is 16. So 16 is the magic number. I'm going to add 16 here, add 16 there. Uh, there we go. So this, I'm not going to use the orange highlighter now, I'll just go like this, is a perfect square. It's going to be x. You can factor it or you can look right there. x plus 4 squared plus y squared equals. Now look what happens on the right hand side. Even though that 16 looks a little weird, you end up getting 0. So what, what's happening? This is the standard equation. But here's the deal. This is not a circle. 
Why is it not a circle? Well, because the radius, this is r squared, the radius, if it was a circle, is just 0. And the center is actually negative 4, comma, right there, that would be 0. And so if the radius is 0 and the center is at negative 4, comma, 0, then all you really have is this point. This is an equation of that point. That point being, well, it's not really a circle anymore, but it's a circle of radius 0. And so when you end up getting a 0 there or a negative number, this thing is called a degenerate circle. Kind of a mean thing to call a, a math expression. And so there are degenerate conic sections. You don't experience them that much in this class, but that is what happened. Now, if this was a 1 here, then you would have radius 1, and then the center would be negative 4, comma, 0. So you can have this. It's not a degenerate circle because this is y squared by itself. It's a degenerate circle because this is 0. And if it was negative number, it would also be degenerate. So this completes problem or section 7.2. The next place that we're going in chapter 7 happens to be parabolas and you're thinking oh we know a lot about parabolas but we're going to learn more like every parabola has something called a focus and that if you rotate a parabola you'll get a parabolic dish and so you can think before you watch the next lecture where do we see parabolic dishes those aren't important in the real world are they or are they I will see you guys next time. Have a good day. I'm out of here.